I wish I could tell you that that's what happened. I made a decision to ask for help, but that's not my story. My story was I was afraid. I knew I was in trouble. I knew I needed help, but I was afraid. I was afraid that if I came forth, I would lose my nursing license, and I didn't been a nurse for over 40 years. I didn't know how to be anything else, and I was so afraid. That kept me very alone and very scared and not knowing what to do. So thank goodness, my family and friends, I had an intervention. And they said I didn't put up much of a fight because I knew I was in trouble. And I went, which I like to say, kicking and screaming to Hazelden, and then I begged not to let them let me out. I was so scared. I finally found myself uh, at Hazelden, and it was a safe place to be. I thought my life was over. I thought I was over. I wished that the ground would open up and I could just fall in uh, because I saw no hope for my life. I saw no future for my life. Um, but that was my major end of denial. That was my taking responsibility of my part and owning my part. I think it's one of the greatest things I learned in treatment and recovery is to own your stuff. Because once you own your stuff, you can begin to heal. And it's not, is it easy? No. Do I make mistakes? Absolutely. But I work my program, and today what you see is what you get. I have no secrets. I was told in treatment, you're as sick as your secrets. I have no secrets. Do I screw up? Absolutely. But I own it immediately, and I make my amends immediately so that I can start my next day clean, and that's what the big book says. To start your morning hoping to do your best to be of service, and at the end of the day, review your day, and if you need to make amends, you make them so that you can always start fresh. I would say it's the opportunity to make a mark in the sand and to do it over. You can't change what happened. You can't, and it's like they say, you don't want to shut the door, but you can't live there. You can't live in shame. You can't live in all that because then you're of no use to anyone. So I would say is what it's given me is an opportunity to look you all straight in the eye and tell you my story and tell you how it was so they could help somebody. But most important, what happened and how I, it is today, and how it is today, and there is hope. And you can hold your head up again, and you can have the most incredible life that you, could ever, you couldn't even imagine. It, I, I always say, tell my sponsees, my, my view was like this, but my higher power's view was this big. And I never could have imagined, and I say before you today, that I would get my life back and that I would be able to be of service and help somebody else because someone was there for me. And so that's how it works. You recover, you play it forward. So you're there for somebody else and then you pass it on. And hopefully they'll get the courage to come forth and to do what it takes to get sober and to be of service to somebody else. And your life will have meaning. Your life will have meaning again. And it's the greatest joy and the greatest gift that I've ever been given. But you have to do the work. No one can do the work for you. You have to do the work and learn to live life on life's terms. And that was, that's what I would tell them.